good morning dear students in this video i am going to explain about the synopsis related to p block elements so p block elements are also said to be the elements which belongs to periodic table periodic table contains more than 100 elements okay so to make it easy they have divided that elements into different blocks like s block p block d block and f block in that now we are going to discuss about p block elements first you want to know what are p block elements p block elements are the elements which contain the last electron in p orbital if last electron present in p orbital then those elements are said to be p block elements so under this p block elements totally you have six groups because it it's a capacity to fill totally six electrons so that totally six groups are present in this p block elements under that in your syllabus in your first puc syllabus you have only about 13th group elements and 14th group elements okay only 13th and 14th group elements are there in your syllabus so first we will discuss about 13th and 14th group elements synopsis so 13th group elements is also said to be boron family because it starts with the element boron and 14th group elements is also known as carbon family because it starts with carbon okay based on that we can say whether it is 13th group element or 14th group element in 13th group element its outermost configuration is ns2 np1 for 14th group elements it is ns2 np2 okay that is outermost configuration for 14th and this is outermost configuration for 13th group elements now we'll see what are the elements present in the group and what what is uh, what is their general configurations and what is about its characteristic features so first we'll see about the elements present in this group totally six elements are present so five elements are present in this group boron aluminum gallium indium thallium so these are the five elements present in 13th group now we are discussing about 13th group elements so that 13th group element contains these five elements that is boron aluminum gallium indium and thallium so boron is a metalloid because it has both metallic property and non metallic property so we can say it is a metalloid aluminum gallium indium and thallium all the four are said to have only metallic property so they are completely metals okay so first one is metalloid remaining all are metals you just remember that now we'll discuss about its configurations just now i have told you what is its general configuration its general configuration is ns2 np1 okay so if you take element wise the outermost configuration of boron is 2s2 2p1 for boron it is 2s2 2p1 for aluminum 3s2 3p1 for gallium 4s2 4p1 for indium 5s2 5p1 for thallium it is 6s2 6p1 whether the energy level changes or not but the outermost configuration is same that is containing two electrons in s orbital and one electron in p orbital so that's why this becomes the outermost configuration for 13th group elements okay so due to having three electrons in its outermost shell so if you take boron it has only three electrons if you take thallium it has three electrons in its valence shell then the common oxidation state of this group elements is plus 3 that means uh, commonly it can ready to form three bonds so commonly it can make a uh, three bonds in its well by using its valence electrons Bo common bonding is 3 and its common oxidation state is also 3 now we'll see oxidation state shown possible oxidation state shown by this 13th group elements 13th group elements can able to show two different types of oxidation states one is plus 3 other one is plus 1 one is plus 3 other one is plus 1 oxidation states now we'll see one by one so here i have written boron to thallium all the elements here we want to study group wise that means we want to study its nature from top to bottom okay top to bottom top element is boron and bottom element is thallium from boron to thallium how will be its uh, electronic configuration that sorry oxidation state uh, stability that we want to discuss so first 
will see plus 3 oxidation state so how plus 3 oxidation state is obtained because of losing 3 electrons from the outermost shell they can show plus 3 okay and sometimes they can also show plus 1 oxidation state this plus 1 oxidation state can be shown by losing only one electron okay if they are losing only one electron from its outermost shell then it can show plus 1 oxidation state that means these 13 group elements can able to show both plus 3 and plus 1 oxidation states okay if you observe plus 3 oxidation state that stability of plus 3 oxidation state down the group decreases so down the group plus 3 oxidation state shown by the elements decreases and stability of plus 1 oxidation state increases that means thallium is ready to show plus 1 oxidation state because down the group plus 1 oxidation state stability order increases so thallium is ready to exist in plus 1 oxidation state this is due to inert pair effect okay this is due to inert pair effect due to inert pair effect plus 1 oxidation state down the group increases first we want to know what is inert pair effect so inert pair effect is nothing but the non involvement of the electrons present in ns orbital for bond formation usually for for bond formation all the three electrons present in outermost shell should involve in bond formation but here in the case of thallium the electrons present in the ns orbital are not involved in bond formation readily that means these electron pair becomes inert towards bond formation then that is called inert pair effect the pair of electrons which are not readily participates in a bond formation then that is called as inert pair and that effect is called inert pair effect okay so that means due to having or due to showing inert pair effect this thallium can lose this only one electron if it loses only one electron it can able to show plus one oxidation state so that we can say plus one oxidation state down the group always increases and plus three oxidation state decreases this is due to inert pair effect very 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 important point in which you want to remember next so here we'll see few questions related to this oxidation state so uh, they have given thallium plus one and thallium plus three which is most stable among these two so just now we have seen down the group plus one oxidation state is more stable so that we can say thallium plus one is more stable okay thallium plus one oxidation state is more stable this is answer next one see the question thallium chloride and thallium trichloride among these two which is more stable thallium chloride and thallium trichloride among these two which is more stable so in thallium chloride thallium is in plus 1 oxidation state in thallium trichloride thallium is in plus 3 oxidation state so thallium which is in plus 1 oxidation state that is highly stable so this compound thallium chloride is highly stable than the thallium trichloride next question among these two which one acts as good oxidizing agent so among these two which one act as good oxidizing agent so thallium plus 3 they have given thallium plus 1 they have given among these two which is acting as a good oxidizing agent when it can act as good oxidizing agent if it readily participates in reduction then it can act as a good oxidizing agent remember whenever an atom or an ion is ready to undergo reduction then that can act as a reducing sorry, oxidizing agent see thallium i have taken here thallium thallium is unstable in plus 3 whereas thallium is highly stable in plus 1 thallium is less stable in plus 3 thallium is highly stable in plus 1 that's why always thallium plus 3 wants to get convert into thallium plus 1 so thallium plus 3 if it wants to convert into plus 1 oxidation state it required two electrons by taking two electrons it can be converted into thallium plus 1 oxidation state so thallium plus 3 is converted into thallium plus 1 by taking two electrons the process of attracting two electrons or uh, adding two electrons is called reduction now thallium plus 3 is undergoing reduction then we can say it is a good oxidizing agent thallium is plus 3 is opti, uh, acting as a good oxidizing agent 
because it readily undergo reduction to get convert into plus 1 oxidation state. So, our answer is thallium plus 3. So, our next topic is atomic radius. Okay. So, we want to discuss atomic radius of 13 group elements from top to bottom. When number of energy levels, here n is nothing but number of energy levels increases, radius also increases. Down the group always number of energy level increases, thereby radius also should get increase. Atomic radius increases with increase in the number of energy levels. Now, we will see expected order for the atomic radius for 13th group. So, this is the expected order. Boron is less radius than the aluminum, than gallium, than indium, than thallium. A thallium is having more number of energy levels around the nucleus thereby its atomic radius is more than the any one given. Okay. And real order, if you see real order it gets changes, it changes between gallium and aluminum. Why this order gets changes between aluminum and gallium means gallium is having completely filled 3D orbital. Gallium is having completely filled 3D orbital. So, once 3D orbital is completely filled, it can show poor shielding effect. Okay, it can show poor shielding effect. Whenever shielding effect becomes poor, the attractions between the nucleus and the valence electron increases. Once the attractions between nucleus and valence electron increases, size kit decreases. See, just imagine this is nucleus. Here 3D orbitals are present. And here the last valence electron is present. Okay, this 3D orbital is having for shielding effect. This is 3D. Okay, 3D orbital is having for shielding effect. Shield means it can act as a screen. Okay, it can act as a screen which will not allow the valence electron to get highly attracted towards the nucleus. So that is called shield or screen. But here that shielding effect of 3D orbital is very Poor. That means it cannot act as a screen. Thereby the attractive forces between the nucleus and the electron, nucleus and the valence electron increases. When this nucleus tritery attacks the valence electron, it comes closer to the nucleus. When this comes closer to the nucleus, automatically the size kits decreases. Here this much is the size. Whenever it is attracted, the size kits decreases. So when size kits decreases, radius also decreases. That is the only reason why gallium is having less atomic size than the aluminum is due to pure shielding effect of completely filled d orbitals. Okay, that completely filled 3 d electrons can act as a can show pore shielding effect thereby the attractions between the valence cell electrons and the nucleus increases size gets decreases. That is about the atomic radius. Okay, and this is the exact order, real order of the 13th group elements present in boron family. Next one, ionization enthalpy. First, we want to know what is meant by ionization enthalpy. So, ionization enthalpy is nothing but the amount of energy required to remove the valence electron or outermost electron either in the ground state or in the ionic state. That is called ionization enthalpy. This is nothing but the amount of energy required to remove an electron from its valence shell either in the ground uh, gaseous state or in the ionic state that is called ionization enthalpy. So, this ionization enthalpy has some relation with the radius. When atomic radius increases, ionization enthalpy decreases. When uh, radius increases, the amount of energy required to remove the last electron becomes less. That means size and ionization enthalpy has a relation. So, when atomic radius increases, ionization enthalpy automatically decreases. Okay. Now, we will see the expected order for the ionization enthalpy of these 13th group elements. So, boron is having greater ionization enthalpy than aluminum, than gallium, than indium and than thallium. Okay, and this is about the expected ionization enthalpy. But in reality that gets changes between aluminum, gallium, indium and thallium. The reason behind aluminum and gallium we already known that is due to completely filled 3D orbital which can show power shielding effect. So, thereby the radius of gallium is more than the 
aluminium okay radius of gallium is less than the aluminium then order changes now we'll see why the indium and thallium gets changes in its uh, expected ratio so here thallium is having completely full 4f orbital okay in thallium 4f orbital is completely filled so this is also showing power shielding effect when power shielding effect is shown by them the attractive forces between the nucleus and final electron or valence electron increases automatically ionization enthalpy also increases radius decreases ionization enthalpy increases see this is uh, the size of orbitals s p d f orbitals when size increases shielding effect gets decreases f orbital is having completely diffused size that means large size when size increases shielding effect decreases so when shielding effect decreases uh, the attraction between the nucleus and the last electron increases radius decreases once radius decreases ionization enthalpy increases so this is the order what you want to remember for ionization enthalpy of 13th group elements now we'll move on to the next property now the other property is reaction with air so these 15th group elements generally i have represented here by using e it may be boron aluminum gallium indium or thallium so generally we may also represent it by using capital e so these are the 15th group sorry 13th group elements when they react with air that air consisting of mixture of gases in that specifically it can react highly with the oxygen when 13th group elements react with oxygen it can be converted into e2o3 type of oxides they can be converted into e2o3 type of oxides when the elements of 13th group undergo reaction with oxygen they can be converted into trioxides okay in place of e you may take a boron aluminum gallium or indium thallium okay now size increases automatically reactivity towards oxygen also increases when size of 13th group elements increases the activity towards oxygen also increases for example boron is non reactive okay boron is non reactive towards oxygen or it may undergo reaction with the oxygen only very at very high temperatures so why it becomes non reactive at room temperature means due to having small size when size decreases reactivity also decreases when size increases reactivity towards oxygen also increases okay that's why aluminum can undergo reaction with oxygen at room temperature okay when aluminum reacts in place of e i have taken aluminum when it react with oxygen it can be converted into al2o3 type of oxide so oxygen uh, reaction of oxygen towards aluminum is very important okay when aluminum reacts with oxygen converts into aluminum trioxide so that aluminum when react with oxygen it can form like a layer okay it is forming like a layer that is which type of layer al2o3 type of layer which can protect the aluminum uh, to undergo reaction with oxygen once a al2o3 layer is formed again this aluminum so again this layer do not allow aluminum to undergo reaction with oxygen that means this aluminum trioxide layer can act as a protective layer can act as a protective layer so this protective layer will not allow aluminum to undergo further reaction with the oxygen then that is called protective layer that means to some extent only aluminum can undergo reaction with oxygen okay when boron react with oxygen it can form boric oxide you may confuse just now i have told you that boron is non reactive so this non reactivity is at room temperature whenever temperature increases automatically even this boron undergo reaction with oxygen when boron react with oxygen we will get b2o3 type of oxide aluminum reacts with oxygen we will get al2o3 and gallium can give gallium trioxide indium in2o3 and thallium tl2o3 so these are the oxides obtained by the 13th group elements when they react with oxygen in that b2o3 is acidic in nature al2o3 is amphoteric why it is amphoteric means it can act as both acidic and basic oxide it can act as both acidic and basic oxide so we can say it is a amphoteric oxide and the other three are basic oxides they can give ox uh, bases when they react with water 
on hydrolysis these can give bases on hydrolysis so we can call them as basic oxides so this is about the nature of the oxides formed by the 13th group elements so 13th group elements can form these type of oxides first one bor boron oxide is acidic in nature aluminum oxide is amphoteric the remaining all other oxides are basic in nature so from this there is a chance to ask a question explain about the uh, nature of the given oxide which among the following is acidic b2o3 which among the following is amphoteric that is al2o3 like that they may ask a question related to the nature of oxides now we will see about uh, next property of these 13 group elements that is reaction with nitrogen even nitrogen is a uh, gas present in the air that nitrogen may also react with 13 group elements can form nitrites for example here I have taken boron when boron react with nitrogen it can give boron nitride BN boron nitride in this boron is in plus 3 oxidation state nitrogen is in minus 3 oxidation state when it undergo further hydrolysis when it undergo further hydrolysis that water contains two ions H plus and OH minus ion so this H plus ion react with N minus 3 ok to balance this three negative charges it requires 3 H plus so when it rea reacts with 3 H plus it converts into NH3 boron is having three positive charges then it can react with OH minus negative charge so when boron react with three negatively charged OH minus ions three negatively charged OH minus ions it can be converted into BOH taken thrice BOH taken thrice we can also write it in the form of H3BO3 which is known as boric acid okay so boric acid is formed as the final product when boron nitrites undergo hydrolysis when boron react with nitrogen they can form boron nitrites when boron nitride undergo hydrolysis it can be converted into boric acid okay that is about reaction with nitrogen so now we will see about the next property that is reaction with halogens 17 group elements are known as halogens which are indicated by x so when such halogens react with these uh, 13 group elements they can form trihalides specifically so these trihalides are highly stable or monohalides than the monohalides so usually when 13 group elements undergo reaction with halogen they can form trihalides for example when boron react with halogen it can form boron trihalide in place of halogen if you take fluorine when boron react with fluorine it can give boron trifluoride when boron react with chlorine we will get boron trichloride when boron react with bromine we will get boron tribromine when boron react with iodine we will get boron triiodide or boron iodide okay boron fluoride chloride bromide and iodides are formed when boron react with the halogens so in that bf3 is a gas bcl3 is also gas whereas bbr3 is present in liquid state and bi3 is exist in solid state so that is about the physical states of halides present uh, by the, formed by the boron when they react with halogens so now we will see about the melting and boiling point order of the halides formed by the boron so this can be explained by this relationship when atomic mass increases Van der Waals forces of attraction between them also increases melting and boiling points are also increases see uh, melting boiling points depends on the Van der Waals forces Van der Waals forces depends upon the atomic mass once atomic mass or radius increases Van der Waals forces of attraction also increases thereby melting and boiling points are also increases among all the halogen size you want to dis see here among all iodine atomic mass is more the van der Waals forces of attraction between them is also increases melting and boiling point is also said to be very high for boron triiodide so for this melting and boiling point is more that means bf3 is less than bcl3 is less than bbr3 is less than bi3 bi3 is having the highest melting and boiling point next one reaction with water 
so this we can also call it as hydrolysis whatever halides are formed they can undergo hydrolysis see bf3 can undergo partial hydrolysis bcl3 bbr3 and ba3 can undergo complete hydrolysis we are discussing about the hydrolysis of only boron halides boron trifluoride can undergo partial hydrolysis other three halides of boron can undergo complete hydrolysis okay for example i am taking bcl3 this bcl3 is undergoing sp2 hybridization and contains one vacant p orbital the last p orbital is vacant in nature for example when it undergo hydrolysis that means addition of water will takes place water formula h2o okay so this vacant orbital will attract this lone pair of electron okay thereby cl present here react with hydrogen can be eliminated as hcl so when hcl is removed oh can replace a cl position so in the place of cl oh is going to attack in the same manner even here the second water molecule third water molecule undergo reaction with pcl3 all the three chloride ions are replaced by three oh minus ions then we will get boh taken thrice and hcl see for example here i am taking in a uh, in a easier way i am explaining here bcl3 we have taken in that each chlorine is in minus 1 oxidation state and boron is in plus 3 oxidation state so then it can be divided into ions b plus 3 and 3 cl minus okay when it undergo hydrolysis water contains h plus and oh minus this h plus combines with cl can be converted into hcl oh minus combines with b3 plus ions okay to balance three positive charges on boron it required three oh minus ions by taking three oh minus ions b can be converted into b oh taken thrice okay this b oh taken thrice is formed as the final product on complete hydrolysis of bcl3 bcl3 undergo complete hydrolysis can be converted into b oh taken thrice this boh taken thrice we can also write it in the form of h3bo3 that is boric acid is formed as the final product okay now we'll see about the hydrolysis partial hydrolysis in the same way bbr3 and bi3 can also undergo complete hydrolysis instead of hcl we will get here hbr and hi if you take these two okay now we'll see about the partial hydrolysis of bf3 now we are discussing about the partial hydrolysis of bf3 so if just consider if we have taken 100 molecules of bf3 in that only 80 molecules can undergo hydrolysis remaining 20 molecules do not undergo hydrolysis that's why we can say it can undergo partial hydrolysis for example when bf3 undergo hydrolysis we will get these two products boh and hf boh taken thrice plus hf okay so this hf is further undergo ionization hf when undergo ionization converts to h plus and f minus okay and in this hydrolysis only 80 molecules gone uh, this hydrolysis process still 20 are left so in that one of the bf3 in that 20 remaining remaining 20 bf3 one of the bf3 react with f minus converts into bf4 minus that means here we will get not only one product in the hydrolysis we will get two products in this hydrolysis partial hydrolysis one is boh taken thrice and the another one is bf4 minus these two are the products when bf3 undergo hydrolysis bf3 do not undergo complete hydrolysis it can undergo partial hydrolysis thereby we will expect expect two important products boh taken thrice and bf4 minus okay now we'll see the last property of the 13th group elements that is back bonding and bond order okay back bonding and bond order is also one of the property shown by the 13th group elements so bf3 i have taken for an example of the halide of 13th group when this bf3 structure we will write so each fluorine can make a single bond with the boron and boron is containing one vacant p orbital 
and in the case of f orbital this p orbital is completely filled by the lone pair of electrons such lone pair of electrons present in fluorine can give back to boron because of having vacant orbital then it is it can able to form p pi p pi bond so it is a pi bond because of sideways overlapping so that pi bond is formed by the p orbital of boron and p orbital of fluorine so that we can say it is a p pi p pi bond okay this is called back bonding so that back bonding can be able to form with this fluorine or with this fluorine or with this fluorine so this is called back bonding which is formed between the fluorine and boron so this may be between these two or these two or these two that means the same bond is formed by the three atoms so we can write it as 1 by 3 the value is 0.33 so it is forming with the only one boron then we can write it as 1 by 1.33 so that is about the bond order so the bond order is uh, 1.33 for the boron trifluoride so there is a question to ask based on this black bonding what is the bond order in bf3 by absorbing this molecule we may say only one but actually its bond order is 1.33 so its bond order is said to be 1.33 so because uh, so they have they'll give the options like this 1 1.33 2 and 0 0.5 and our answer is 1.33 this is due to back bonding because of involving in the back bonding so that boron and fluorine involves in p pi p pi bond formation thereby its bond bond order is said to be 1.33 Okay, this is about the general properties of uh, P block elements, especially 13th group. So, in the same manner, even the properties will be remain same for the 14th group elements also. Here, I am not explaining because it is almost similar like these properties even for the 14th group elements. Now, in the next video, we will see about the bits related to this P block elements. And the P block elements you want to study about 13th and 14th group elements. Here I have explained 13th group elements general properties in the same way. Even the properties of 14th group elements will also be present. About those properties we will discuss while solving the bits.